Hello. Had a bit of an issue starting the stream, but we should be good to go now. Just had to make sure I'm saving these so I can upload them to YouTube later. All right, so what you see in front of you is a piece of art that I've already started. This is the elevator in the main base where you'll be operating from in my game, Volatile. And I'll be showing you parts of what's going to happen later. But for now, what I'm trying to do is make sure that I have buttons and everything um, for selecting which room you want to go to. I worked on the, the arrangement of it yesterday. I had to make sure... So I'm making my game uh, support a 4x9 aspect ratio, a 16x9 aspect ratio so the walls to the sides are kind of barren um, because when the if a player selects a 4x9 aspect ratio or resolution they'll they won't be able to see anything there and I don't want them to miss out on contact content so those side walls will just have scratch marks or like wear and tear once I'm done this area will be mainly to display posters, so I'll have posters that will talk about uh, movies or products within the universe. Uh, and I'll show a bit of those later on. I'll try to make sure that they actually fit the, the layout. And this is where you'll have buttons for all the areas of the ship. Sorry, just sipping on a bit of coffee. So let's see here. I'm going to have to actually run the game real quick just to see what the uh, the buttons are. So I'll be flipping back and forth once I grab a screenshot of that. I started designing the game on a 1920 by 1080 resolution, so that is mainly why I'm working at that resolution, and I don't have registered X splits, so that takes it down to 720p. Sorry if the music is a bit loud. Done. see here all right so this is what it currently looks like in game the image I'm working on now is serving as a simple background in the game Let's see here. so I need five buttons Let me make that smaller so I can work with it. There we go. Five buttons. All right. So what do I want them to look like? What I had in mind was, that's too small. Something like this. This is a section where you'll have a little button. What you would imagine the character presses, because in these, um, in, inside the base within the many screens or rooms, um, you'll essentially just be clicking on objects. You won't see your character. You'll just see a portrait whenever you talk to somebody. This is going to be a mini screen just showing you what the room you're going to and I think I may add some effects later, just a, a little flickering effect as if it's 
to, to convey the fact that it's a digital screen. Alright, so we'll need five of these. That's not what I want. Lock the layer first. The, the way I work is not exactly optimal, but then again, pretty much everybody has their own way of doing things. So what I do is I usually have a color layer that I store all, all my colors on, or rather the mid shade, the shadows and the highlights, and then I just play within that. I started the designing this game when I had a s separate process of actually drawing. So that's going to come into effect later on because uh, it's not something I use on pieces not related to the game. But and that's what I use for now so I, that I keep the look consistent. And like pretty much everybody that's going to be watching that's, that's an artist, you always have that tendency to go back to your existing art, especially in a game, and try to redo it with your current skill set. It's so tempting, but I, I must not. What? Okay, that, that was the color there. And sometimes you just get confused for no reason as to what you're doing. There we go. I'm just making sure that this reads as this. All right. Back to 100% opacity. Let's make sure we keep that round layer. So that we can then actually let's recolor it into a dark green. And what we'll be doing is this will be the button. It's not what I want. There we go. Maybe I should have worked on the buttons at a higher resolution, but you know what? It doesn't really matter. The the details that I want to do come across just fine. And if I ever have the time or resources to come back to this game after I'm done, I'll improve some of the art that I wasn't too happy with to begin with. So let's see here. Now I can merge this down. I'll have just a one layer for that, so I can draw on it just fine. I'm just going to see about the sketch here. What I want to do is, this is a bit of a hang up of mine, but I want to make sure that distances are correct no matter what I do. What I mean is, I'll show you in a second actually. Let's use the same green because it doesn't matter for this. And maybe just make it just a tiny bit shorter. Let's see first actually. All right. Yep, that seems good enough to me. I'm gonna stretch that all the way here. So yeah, what I'm trying to do is just make sure that my distances are correct for the next rectangle that I'll be drawing.
which will contain the actual words. And that way I can make sure that when I translate the game in different languages, it'll read just fine with my custom font and the additional fonts that, I, that you can select in the options menu. So let's see, is that good? The distance. All right. Visually, that looks fine, actually. That was fine to begin with. This is something weird that's been happening for the past few days. It feels like some keys stay pressed. I don't know why. But that is for another time. Alright, so this will be either black or... We'll keep it black for now. Now we can remove that, so... One thing you'll notice is that I am not very organized <laughs> in my layers. I'm trying to find the actual s sketch layer that I did. So that's not it. Oh, great. I did it straight on the... on the panel layer. Let's lock that, make it uniform and that's that's it. Let's actually start shading. Alright, we're gonna assume that the light is coming mainly from top. I'm gonna select the round soft brush. This is almost exclusively what I use. If I want to add detail, I actually add it manually, but one of these days I'm going to have to sit down and devise a process for myself to to work with brushes that will convey the same details that I'm actually drawing by hand now. And then we'll see how that works out for me. I'm always scared of laborious processes, so in my head it's going to be quite a bit of a process to learn how to manage my time while using these brushes. That is to say, just a learning curve is what I'm scared of. Actually, that's not what that's supposed to be. That's supposed to be a highlight because the light is coming from up top and this little section, the section in which the black black rectangle is, is inset. Therefore, the top will be dark because it curves in and the bottom will be highlighted because that's where it curves in, catching the light as it falls from the top. All right. All right, that looks fine. It's not very dark, and that's because of the second part of my process, which will be to use hard light as a way to darken things up while maintaining a bit of vibrancy. So, yeah. Nowadays, I select my colors based on vibrancy as well, but when I started the game, I used dark... Sorry, hard light as a sort of cheat to to get vibrant shadows and shaded areas because whenever I'd select the colors myself it would come across as kind of washed out or not vibrant enough. That may have been to the previous tablet that I was using to be honest. It was a, an old 2008 Cintiq tablet and the colors on it were not the best 
you know, they, they did just fine, but uh, you wouldn't get a true sense of what the color actually is until, for example, I'd move the artwork from the Cintiq to the main screen. I have two screens. And then that's when I'd be like, okay, that's what that looks like. That's not very good. I don't know why that is. I'm looking at other people's processes. I, I forget the name of the artist, but he's a fairly well comic artist that I follow on, or I used to follow on DeviantArt. I don't go there that much anymore. And I saw that he was using this cheat to get very good looks to his art. So I'm like, all right, let's give it a shot. And it worked out for me in the sense of Honestly, just for myself, I just liked how they looked more. Alright, I'm adding just a bit of shadow there. Then, Yeah, I honestly should have just worked on this in a higher resolution. <laughs> this is not easy to work on a pixel-wide area. You need quite a bit more pixels just to get a good sense of what you're actually drawing but it's fine we started it's fine we'll fix it in post this is where the button sits let's actually draw a bit of shade to imply depth for the object sitting above it or maybe I shouldn't do that actually because when you press the button in game Maybe I want to I wanna imply it's going in. Nah, it's fine. I'll figure something out. Because, so the player, when they click this button, they'll actually be able to click this whole area. I'm not going to make the players click just this green button. Especially when you look at it from, from this, it makes sense that anybody that's going to hover over this, they'll have a bit of a sense of, all right, I'm just going to click on this general area. And you'll have a little effect, a visual effect to imply, okay, you're hovering over it, and when you click it, it'll do a little boop visually. And with sound effects too, but I don't have a lot of those in yet. Seems that I'm saving that for last. I have music, some sound effects, and mostly just code and art. So here we go. Hard light. Let's see what we can achieve with it. Nope, don't like it. The color that I'm using for hard to go hard light with is too light, so it's creating this weird orangey color instead of a darker vibrant brown I think is what I'm trying to get there. So yes, we're doing okay with this. So yeah, sometimes unfortunately I do have to reselect the color for the shading, especially when I use dark light, hard light. I keep wanting to call it dark light, as if it's an emo selection or something. All right. Gonna color the sides a bit because the light is coming mainly from the top. The side has to be a bit shaded. All right. So now we're gonna use pure white just to accentuate some of these corners, the sections where light catches the most. At least that's how I managed to convey accentuation of light. There's better ways to do it, of course, but most of my game is designed with this kind of art style in mind. So I gotta try to keep consistent whenever possible. 
and that's also implying that I know a better way to do it. I don't. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, we'll switch off hard light. I'm gonna fix up some of these areas that look a bit off to me. A bit too dark. All right, that looks good enough. Okay, we're gonna go. Great, I don't know what happened to my color here. I was under the impression I selected it and put it down. I might have just undone that part too when I was undoing some other aspects of... All right. So, this is the dark green, medium green, green, that's, yeah, we'll keep it the same. Oftentimes I like to experiment with selecting a, a bit of a different hue of whatever, so whatever mid color I use, I like to select a bit of a different hue, so for example in this green, Maybe I'd go more towards teal. Maybe that is what I'll do, actually. <laughs> it gives it a more plasticky look, I think. If I do that. Um, and for green... for the Sorry, for the highlight. I oftentimes go towards the yellow just to give it a bit of a spring in color. Like, make it look more organic. But because I'm trying to make this look plastic, I'm going to keep it this color. So, for example, for leaves, I'd select a more yellowy green hue. That's not the right layer. That's something that I'll be doing a lot, just FYI. Drawing and then realizing I'm not on the right layer. I know that one of the newer versions of Adobe, 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 <laughs> of Adobe's Photoshop, they have a lot more useful features. You, it can tell what layer you're trying to draw on. Um, or at least that's the impression that I was getting by watching other people's streams. Let's see here. So what I'm trying to do is one of those classic buttons that has a little bit of an indent for when you press your finger. Okay, let's, let's do that. Bring it up there. All right, so that's that. We'll do the highlight. We're gonna do a bit of a highlight here and inside, so there'll be a bit of a separation where the the. the mold essentially doesn't catch the light the right way and this and I'm not sure if it's physically correct the way light falls there but it gives you the idea of what the shape is right you can tell it's just curving and like and that's all we need. We need it to just get that little impression of what the shape is. I'm going to have to fix it up just a bit, but... Alright. So that's where the top catches the light. So that's good. Let's see. What I'm not liking here is it seems to lose some of the roundness. All right. all right, all right, all right. There we go. That looks better. Better-ish. All right. So now we go to my good friend, Hard Light. I was going to say dark again and stop myself just in the nick of time. Give it a little bit of depthness to the shading here. 
Right, so what I was saying earlier is I'm trying to... So I tried for a while to stray away from this technique because there's you lose a bit of control when you rely on this too much, for sure. There's a bit of control over your the way you render light, the way you render your objects that, you, that just gets lost by doing this. It's That's why I ended up calling it a cheat, essentially, because, yeah, sure, you're going to get a nice look out of your shading. Oh, no, I'm on hard light. All right. I didn't want to be on hard light for that. So you saw what that did. It gave the highlight a bit of a of a gr uh, more vibrant greenish tint and uh, you, you'll you often see that that's what hard light does to light colors which is fine I mean it's the the whole intent for me is to give colors a bit more vibrancy but I find it works best for my purposes anyway when I use it on on dark areas because all the dark areas that bleed into other colors that bleed into lighter areas, for example, those get these weird, rich, like, in-betweens. And that's what I was looking for. Now I try to do it by by eye. And frankly, if I think about it, just using that process for a while has helped me get a better eye of what colors look better. So yeah, it did help me. Fine. I'll agree to that. Still. Alright, so let's see. What do I want with this button? Do I want it to be dark? That's not the right combination of buttons. Do I want it to be dark? And then just get darker? Or do I want it way lighter when it's pressed? Let's see. So when you hover over, maybe I want that. Or maybe I want to display. Well, this is going to be just trial and error, just to see what works best. I'm going to try to see if I can make it. So, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to make it seem like there's a little light inside the plastic button that is lighting up when, you know, the user, the, the player, actually. So let's see if I can manage to make that. Will that come across? Probably not. I'm not already not liking the look of this, but I'm going to have to look to zoom out just to see if I like this at all. What I don't like mainly is these long mustaches it has. Let's clear those out just a bit. And then because I don't want to ruin the, that layer. Maybe it is good for something. Let's actually add a bit of white in there. Give it a bit more range in, in its color. Alright, see? So now I don't have to be worried about the fact that it seems as if All right, that's good enough for me. I actually like the look of that. And we're gonna have to actually do the same for this black. Rectangle, let's see what we can do. Do I want to make this look like a screen? Probably, that's the intent that I feel I have. So we're going to do a bit of this. It's not going to be this white, but I just 
want to make sure that I catch the I catch the actual shapes that I'm creating here. So you'll notice that what it seems I'm doing is I'm creating a sort of beveled look to the screen by drawing the, sh the shading the way I am. Unfortunately, that means that this is not exactly accurate to what technology would be in this this time frame. Well, kind of, because so the game takes place at a time where humanity hasn't advanced to say 2020 yet. It's more like 2005 or seven, where humanity has come across a an alien civilization that wanted to have a little bit of a tournament for fun where they would gather up all these civilizations from all over the galaxy have a tournament and the winners of the tournament would get the technologies of other civilizations so it would be in tears the the top placed civilization would get all of the technologies of everybody that placed below them the next tier down they would get all the technologies below them etc and so that was considered a great step forward for humanity except they still were working on backwards engineering everything that they received from that tournament via I don't know why I said via they were still working on backwards engineering everything when this game takes place so we've achieved uh, faster than light travel uh, by just repurposing technological devices that we were given but we're not that good at it we're still trying to make sure that we don't break everything as we use that technology for example, and corporations came together and were like, ah, we're not going to wait to make sure that we fully understand all this tech. We're just going to start using it once we can incorporate it into our own ships and for our own purposes. And that's what they did. So I, I guess it would make sense that screen technology wouldn't have advanced as far as it did today because humanity was a lot more focused on backwards engineering and therefore just using screens that were not totally flat and that's the excuse that I'm gonna go with anyway it sounds good enough all right so what I want to do is this seems a bit too dark here I'm just gonna add a bit more white just to this central area it doesn't look as flat um, it's a bit too much let's take it down to that that's good enough. Alright, so what's going to happen is these words that you see here are going to show up here. And what do I want to do? Do I want to have just a color change? Maybe. Maybe I just want it to go from black to dark blue and then to lighter blue as you click on it. Let's try it up. Let's see what what would look better. So we're gonna select this layer. There we go. Okay, I don't think I did that right. Nope. It was supposed to be the other way around. There we go. All right. That is better. Do I go with blue? Yeah, I'll go with blue. Why not? 
blue is a fine color to have. Let's refine that just a little bit. Just go on to a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of touch here, a bit of touch there. All right. So as so this is the hover over color. As the player hovers over, this is just going to fade in. It's not going to just pop up. It's going to fade in real quick, within like 0.5 of a second. And then we're going to make the do a click one. So for the click, that's too tough there. Alright, that looks good to me. Wait. Alright, well that's not... <laughs> Trying to make sure... Yes. Alright, that I've separated these layers correctly. Alright, so... Here's what's going to happen. We're going to have... This layer is going to be in an image that sits on top of everything. So it's not going to be part of the actual button. Yeah, I'm working in Game Maker, by the way. These two are going to be separate colors that are going to be... <coughs> I'm wondering, do I just want that for the top layer? Or do I want to combine these and have them as... Let's see what that would look like, actually. So what I'm trying to figure out now is... When the player hovers over, it's just going to be this. When the player clicks, it's going to bring in this. And that looks good enough. I basically duplicated the layers there, but I think that looks good. Alright. Good enough. This is the button layer. Alright, so I'm going to try to fit in 12 here. <laughs> 12, 5, I mean. And this is where my need for proper separation comes in. Let's see. That's a good distance, right? That looks good to me. Let's do pure red. I love doing these pure colors. And by pure I just mean it's just going straight to a corner. And they go straight to the top. So you can't go any further. And that way I know that it's the same color every time I do it. And I don't know why that matters to me, but somehow it does. There we go. When I learned about holding shift down to move things around, Photoshop. That was like a godsend. I went to school actually for 3D visual effects and visual production. Right, that's so I learned a bunch about Photoshop there. We were creating textures. That's not we were creating textures via Photoshop, importing them to 3ds Max, etc. And I kind of grew to love Photoshop because of that, and that's where I learned a bunch of these little key tricks. But I didn't learn about Shift. For some reason, that never came up. That's for what. So, I just kept looking up tutorials, kept... That's not... Oh no. What did I do? I pasted somehow. 
All right, see, there's certain commands that keep happening, and I don't quite understand why. Anyway. Pixel perfect. It's just the way I like it. All right, now we got those settled in terms of distance from each other, we're going to try to make sure we get the same distance from the top to bottom. Just so that it's more aesthetically pleasing. Now, some things I do go by eye. That's not what I want. Alright. We're going to do them all together. And they were not all together. Great. That looks about right. Mm. That's good. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, convert these to a layer, turn them to red. So now I have the base layer there that's, when I import it into the game, I'm just going to have a look at what the alignment should be so that I can place the, the actual individual buttons correctly. And I'm thinking of how I want to... Anyway, I'm, I'm starting to think about coding, which is not yet the case. We don't need to worry about coding just yet. So now the question is, do I want to leave it where, with more space at the bottom so I can add, like, descriptions or something there? Like little fluff. Or do I want to center it vertically, too? Let's have a look. So I've used the same red for the debug portion of it, which is to to import it into the game, just to be able to tell the alignments for each of them. And now I'm going to use bright green or neon, so to speak. That's what I wanted to. I want to copy it so that I can then move it down. Uh-huh. You create so many copies this way of stuff. That's not let's select everything. Let's move everything. That seems about right. Let's let's actually check. Wow, pixel perfect. Great. And now that I went through all that trouble, honestly, I <laughs> kind of like it more centered. Uh, sorry, not centered. There we go. That's the right one to move. Looks good enough to me. Alright. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just create other fluff pieces at the bottom. I don't have to touch on, do I? 
No. What in the hell is happening to my controls here? Feels like something is. Like, just random commands are starting up. It started yesterday, and I'm not sure what is happening. Anyway, that is besides the point. And as my fiancé likes to say, that just means it's almost as important as the point. So, what am I doing now? I am essentially trying to make rounded corners. So that it looks good. To move that to all sides. There we go. Merge those two down. Duplicate. Move them to the bottom. Et voilà. Put a mask, mask the corners. One thing I wish wouldn't happen, and I, this might be a feature that I just don't know how to turn off, is if Photoshop wouldn't just show me a grid of the pixels once I zoom in too close. Now, with a lot of things, I have to assume that's a feature that I just frankly don't know about. Who knows? I've lived with it long enough. I'm, I'm okay with keeping it on. And it's always strange to think, uh, for me, and it is anyway, how many features and things I frankly just don't even know are in Photoshop. I'm sure that there's so much I don't know about. Now this is something that just bugs me. But I can tell there's just this faint tiny pixel there. There we go. Perfect. Now the rounded corners. Doesn't look the best, but whatever. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Let's see. I have a couple of posters that I'm... They're not ready yet, but they're... Oh, this one is ready. It just doesn't have the wording on it that I want. This one is ready, too. Um, I've actually been thinking of reshading the, the mascot here, but... We'll see. Or at least creating a few better shades. That is entirely too big. Scale that down. Move it up. And great. It's on the wrong layer there. Shrink it down even more. So I'm going to have these ads show up, I say. So maybe center it like this. That looks good enough. Or maybe the ads here and little news pieces, sorry. Yeah, here will do. And a small little section for maybe news pieces, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. 
And that, that'll be for another time for now. Where's my... There we go. I'm going to duplicate that. I made so many duplicates just to make sure that nothing... I don't break anything that I can't recover. And 99% of the time, there was no need for me to make a duplicate. Frankly, you can always just fix things or re redo them just super easily, but that's a remnant from the days long past where I started to do that. Just that I keep myself protected and then I never... I grew out of it in terms of skill, but not in terms of muscle memory. I'm wondering, maybe this panel shouldn't be this dark. Yeah, no, we're gonna change the color. No, the saturation is fine, the lightness needs to change. We're gonna do... More metallic blue. That's fine. Let me make sure I select it. Flatten the, the coloring. We'll add this to our color wheel. We're gonna keep the, the dark blue because I have a few other things in mind. Maybe some graffiti on the side of the of the elevator. It's not gonna be vital information for anybody that uses a four by three aspect ratio, but it'll be just additional fluff. We'll see. Or I may do just ooze dripping down from the cracks here, or just collected dirt. It's not the color that I wanted to start with, but it is the color we're going to end with. So again, the light source is coming from the top. It's fine. Gonna do this for every button. Don't be dropping the wrong shadow, but I'm gonna also create a little bit of a dark spot right there. And this is what I what is essentially my equivalent of ambient occlusion, except just drawn in, which it technically always has, but. Or not always, but it used to be in old 3D games. You'd have to draw in the ambient occlusion to give it that more realistic feel. I could just technically just copy paste this shading. Bad. Sometimes I'm a glutton for punishment. after I'm done with this I'm going to end the stream and by the next time I'm starting the stream up which will be next Tuesday more, most likely on the game anyway I'm going to have a Thursday stream for something else but next Tuesday I'm going to have these already in the game and show you what they look like how they operate visually and next Tuesday will probably be more of a coding day than anything else. We'll maybe put in a new mission. 
or code in a new enemy or a new weapon. I'll see what I'll have done in terms of visuals by then. I need to. I have a bunch of half-made weapons in the game. I just need to actually finish up the coding and the visuals. Weapons and side systems. Frankly, I think after I do just the, sh the raw shading here, before I apply any hard light, I think I'm going to end the stream. And if you hear random noises, it's, it's a little kitty cat wanting some attention. Attention and or food. Sometimes those go together. I might actually tinker with with the drop shadow here. Not in love with it, but I have to see what it looks like once I apply the the hard light. All right, let's actually do a bit of a soft edge here. Just imply roundedness. It's always strange when I have to think about... Oh, no. I lost the car. When I think about what... How light works. Let's do a brighter corner there. We want the rounded corner to be very obvious. We'll do a little bit of a stronger midpoint here to imply okay that's where the light is hitting the object the strongest and the light may not be hitting the corners the strongest but it's a very good way to effectively show hey we've got rounded corners and we're only gonna go up to about halfway on the light there now these are stylistic choices of course with how to render the light and the edges of this simply because it looks good. It may not be physically accurate, but it looks it it looks good and it conveys what it is fairly well. You know, and there's it's always a dream to to be able to render as accurate as possible to real life, at least for me it is. But when you have to consider getting a game shipped and finishing everything you're not going to have time to practice all these things and getting it super perfect next week when I show off more of the game as I'm working on it you'll see what I mean there's plenty of areas that may not look the best but they're just good enough and that's that's a mantra that you'll hear me talk about throughout this process just good enough is more than enough. At the end of the day, no matter what your process is, you're learning and you're improving. Whether you see that improvement tomorrow or in 10 years, there's a, an incremental improvement that builds. Even if you're doing something you've done for days on end. I'm using the same old process I did at the start of this game but I can tell that I'm improving in terms of catching things, in terms of getting a better sense of what color goes with uh, another color. What type of shading conveys a shape better? 
those types of things. Yeah, I know I said I'd end the stream as soon as I finished the general shading, but you know what? I wanted to do a bit of dark light, uh, hard light. Let's do that now. Let's see. We'll do this lower part a bit thicker. Just because I think it looks better, portrays what I want better. And we might leave this mostly untouched. I want the top shadow to be a bit softer. Might even correct it just a bit later. I've been wanting to work on the elevator section for a while now. I actually had a change of heart. Uh, originally there weren't supposed to be this many rooms. So you see the main lobby, which is... When you dock you always start up in the main lobby. When you dock your ship. It would make sense to start up in the hangar, right? Because that's where you dock, but... I made it so you start in the main lobby because that's where you'll get most of your primary uh, missions and everything and having the player always travel to the elevator and then to the main lobby every time they dock wouldn't make much sense so you'll always get straight to the main lobby as soon as you dock your ship and then you can visit the hangar later you'll see your ship there and talk to uh, the person in charge of repairs and deploying ships and everything. Anyway, the point was, I didn't even used to have a hangar room. I only had the main lobby, the quarters, and the the rooms that you can access straight from the main lobby, which is the armory, the intelligence room, and... Well, it used to be the quarters. It would just be three main rooms. I expanded it because I needed a few more things in the game. A few more NPCs to talk to. To be able to serve out missions and flesh out the world for you, for the player a bit. And I think when I added the, in the lounge... Is when I created a small little mini game so there's an arcade in the lounge that you can start playing a little mini game on I wanted to add more but frankly I don't know if I'll do that before launch I may add them later but there's at least one game there it's just a, a small little distraction to to do Let's fix up some of this small stuff and then we'll be done for tonight. I just want that ambient occlusion part to be soft. I don't want it to be overly intrusive to the eye. So what I think I'll be doing afterwards, I'll add some nicks and scratches here and there just to to give it a bit of a lived-in feel. I'm going to try to add that more around places because a lot of the areas and a lot of the sections throughout the game they just look too pristine. And that, that ain't good. And I'll also add a bit of shading underneath this. And ambient occlusion. Same for the, for the poster section here. I'll have to add some frames to this some shading and then I'll add the grime the lived in feel alright we'll save the project and I'll see you next week with everything in the game bye bye